Welcome to VHS Voyage, where we are on a journey to find, watch, and discuss movies on VHS we've never seen or never knew existed. I'm Matt. I'm Devin. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Hard Bounty. So today's episode is on what is quite possibly the worst Western I've ever seen in my life, hands down, and that is Hard Bounty. Before we get into this absolute shit show, Devin, hit us with whatever little bits of facts of information you could find. Uh, it, like nothing, pretty much. So this is directed by Jim Wynorski, and he makes these kinds of movies. I noticed that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he has one good movie. It's called Shopping Mall. It's a very good movie from the 80s. Oh, nice. It's, is that a slasher? It's a. Um, it's like a campy <clears> 80s. <throat> these kids get trapped in a mall and these robots uh, like malfunction and start killing all the teenagers oh, in the mall. Oh, okay. So here's some other movies he's made. He makes the Busty Cop series, <laughs> The Hills Have Thighs, hmm. Devil Wears Nada, The Witches of Breastwick, and he's directed 107 <laughs> movies. Wow. This is what he makes. So he does basically a lot of softcore porn parody type deals yes. and stuff like that. This stars Matt McCoy and Kelly LeBrock, IMDb. <laughs> okay, IMDb, I'm going to say 2.5. 3.8. 3 That's, That's generous. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, only audience is available. Uh, I'm going to say 16. 20. This almost had some alternate titles, uh, How the Breast Was Won and Hooters <laughs> and Hooters and Holsters. Are you serious, dude? Yeah. <laughs> So How the Breast Was Worn is like playing on the movie How the West Was Won. Yeah. And Hooters and Holsters. So it opens with with our main protagonist. His name is Martin. And he is he has his bounty. He's a bounty hunter, we find out. He has his bounty cornered. And then, and then four other guys randomly show up. And they're like, hey, we want that bounty. So then he shoots and kills them all. So we establish two things about our main guy. He's a bounty hunter. And he's a badass, a grizzled Western oh, badass. So two things. One, this opening is so jarring. Oh, it's yeah. like over this coarse desert, and then all of a sudden, it just starts there. Nothing else happens. It just starts on this desert. Yeah. And then it pans up super quick, and there's a guy like falling backwards. Yeah. Also, they wanted this main character to be Clint Eastwood so bad. Dude, yet yeah, have you noticed in this movie, he almost always has a cigar in his mouth. Yes, and he has like the scruff, kind of like this, sort of. He's literally trying to be Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah. That's what they wanted him to be. Yeah. So then it cuts to a scene introducing one of our villains. He's a man in black, and he approaches some old man in the middle of a thunderstorm and kills an old man because the old man turned down an offer from somebody named Mr. Bar Bartell. So he shoots and kills the old man. Then after he kills the old man, he walks up to him and unloads four more bullets in him when he's already dead. It's like the movie's trying to establish this is a real bad guy right here. So after that, we get back to town. Martin is collecting his bounty and he decides to hit the saloon for a drink. So he goes to the saloon, decides to get a drink. And he also wants to do a little bit of whoring because this saloon is also a brothel and it is the home of four prostitutes. Um, Rachel, Donnie, Jess, and I can't remember the fourth hey, one's name. you really name. got their names down. That's because I took a lot of uh, notes, man. I didn't man. remember a single one. And I can't remember the fourth one's name. But anyways, he decides to go up and get with Donnie and, and you find out that him and this prostitute Donnie know each other. They have some kind of they have some kind of weird relationship, but the, the movie never really goes in the detail as to how they know each other or what their relationship is. Like, are they just, friends or they're like, what? I think when he comes to this town, he brings his bounty back. He goes up to her room, lets his emotions out and then has sex with her. Yeah. And that's their connection. There are a lot of pointless scenes in this movie that do not contribute anything to the plot or no. progressing the story. You mean every scene in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> you mean, you, you mean the entire right movie? This guy right here. <laughs> so there's a scene where there is a guy with a prostitute. He's in the bed. She pulls her boobs out. And by the way, don't let your kids watch this episode of VHS Voyage because we're going to be talking about some stuff that they probably shouldn't be listening to. Bro, you might get put on a list for watching it as an adult. <laughs> you might get put on a list. Yeah. So this dude's in the bed. Your wife will leave you if, you, if she catches you watching this. <laughs> So he's in the bed, prostitute, she pulls her boobs out and he has a little, in an episode of premature ejaculation as soon as he sees her boobs. And then she goes, that'll be $2. Because, you know, 
he's done. So she needs to collect her money because she's not going to do anything else. Martin takes on another bounty. This one's for $10,000. So this one's big bucks. But for some reason, the, the, the wanted man opened up his own bounty. Like the sheriff said that the guy opened up his own bounty for some reason. It's 10,000 bucks. He killed some ranch family. So Martin goes, finds the man. The man comes out of a house. He's like, I didn't do it. I didn't kill anybody. And then some random woman shows up, pulls out her gun. Martin kills the woman. Then he kills the bounty. And then he goes back to town. There was no points to this scene. Well, also, when the guy's dying, he's like, I didn't actually kill anybody. Yeah. And then he buries him. Yeah, buries him and the woman he killed. I didn't get that scene at Dude, all. Dude, it made no sense. None. And so he gets back to town. When he gets back to town, he sees Carver. They lock eyes from a distance. And then it fades into a flashback where you see Carver throwing a Molotov cocktail into a house, a whole family running out and he just guns down a whole family. And then it comes back to present day and you find out that him and Martin and Carver know each other. They have some kind of history together. And then Martin proceeds to go into the saloon. I guess he's pissed off because he sees Carver and he lost out on a $10,000 bounty. He goes up to Donnie in her room and I'm not gonna go into detail, but let's just say he has very uh, rough sex with her. Here, I'll go into detail. He throws her on the bed, he starts <laughs> to choke her. He literally puts his hands around her throat, starts to choke her, and she's like literally dying and suffocated, and then he forces himself into her. Yep, that's pretty much This out. dude's a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, and it was so weird, and then it cuts to the next morning, and they have this weird bonding moment Yeah, it's morning. like, oh, it's like, oh, we're, it's fine. Yeah, it's no big deal. Why, it made no sense. From that point on, I hated him. I was like, <laughs> I, I hate this guy. And then for some reason, and somebody randomly throws a Molotov cocktail into the salon on the top floor and there's this massive fire in the room, dude. And Donnie has a bucket of water, a small bucket of water, throws it on this massive fire and magically puts the fire out. Yeah. <laughs> The reason that the person threw the fire in there is it was an angry wife that yeah. her husband had had sex with one of the prostitutes. Yeah. It was an angry wife that threw yeah. the Molotov in there. So then we cut to Martin. He goes to the bank because he has $22,000 in like federal vouchers or something. He goes to the bank teller and he's like, hey, I want to cash these in. Bank teller's like, dude, we don't have enough money to do that. It's going to take two weeks for us to get the cash. And they're like, we have a deed to the saloon. And Martin's like, I've got a better idea. And instead of taking the cash, he becomes the new owner of the saloon. I still don't understand how that happened either. <laughs> I don't either. I still don't get how that happened. <laughs> I don't either. It doesn't make any sense. And then there's a very long sex scene that's basically a softcore porn scene between Jess and some guy named Willie. Uh, very long, drawn out, basically the softcore porn scene of the movie. No reason for it at all. No reason at, at all. all. It's just in the movie for that reason. Yeah. Uh, and then there's another scene where Rachel and Jess are fighting again because Rachel stole Jess's wedding gown and Martin shows up and he's like, give it back. Another pointless scene. No reason. No at reason all. at all. They None. keep trying to establish that this woman's a thief. Yeah. But there's no point to it. None. None whatsoever, and they don't, and, and they make her not likable. None of the no Is characters. Is anyone in this movie likable? I kind of like Benjamin. Which one was that? Benjamin was the dude his dad gave him two dollars for okay. his birthday. I like the dead hanging body that was just hanging in the city. <laughs> That's the character I like. <laughs> Some young man named Benjamin comes into the bar. He's all shy looking. And Martin walks up to him and he's like, "Hey, my dad gave me two dollars for my birthday. He told me to come. I should come here and spend it." And Martin's like, yeah, you should. And so uh, Benjamin gets to have two ladies for the price of one for his birthday. Jess and uh, I don't the other one. I can't uh, remember. Right. Bernadette. Bernadette. Sure, we'll go with Bernadette. He cuts to them in their room. Benjamin, he's about to, you know, get laid with two women. They pull out their boobs and the scene ends. And then we see Carver buying Rachel. Carver comes in, he buys Rachel, goes up there with Rachel, and Carver ends up killing Rachel just to make Martin mad. He's he's there to do a job, 
Why would he just kill Rachel just to make his ex Texas Ranger partner mad it, and then leave? It, 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 I'm not trying to make logic of this movie. I, I mean, it's and, literally a porno. And he leaves his wallet in the room for them to find. So it's like he wanted them to know it was No, that's him. not what happened. Oh, what happened? She stole his wallet out of the jacket. That's right, because she's a kleptomaniac. And then, and then she put it under the pillow because she was going to steal it later. That's right. And then and then it was under the pillow. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. why would he not notice his wallet missing when he leaves? Yeah, exactly. So Donnie goes to the sheriff. And she's like, hey, we got to go get Carver because he, you know, he killed my sister and Martin and Carver and Martin and the sheriff are like, nah, we don't want to. And then they're and then Donnie's like, well, you know what? Me and the girls are going to take the law into our own hands. So then and Martin tries to talk them out of it. Then you see a scene of them like putting their cowboy gear on, which, by the way, of course, shows lots of cleavage. They're putting their cow, their cowgirl gear on. They're getting ready to go out and hunt down Carver so that they can get justice for Rachel's death. And there's this like stupid music playing while they're doing this. And there's this annoying ass, loud whip crappy cracking sound like while this stupid ass banjo sounding Western music is playing. Here we get to what was the funniest scene in the entire movie. As Martin's trying to talk them out of it, Donnie says to Martin, and I quote, <clears throat> there are only two things I can't do. One is to make love to a woman, and the other is to piss up a wall. And right now, there is only one of those I regret not being able to do. <laughs> you just don't understand, do you? You can't do this. It's only two things I can't do. One is make love to a woman. The other one is piss up a wall. And right now, there's only one of those I regret not being able to do. So he, so Carver sends three men to kill the ladies in Martin, right? You see these three men up on a hill with their rifles. You see the ladies on their horses coming down a road. These three men are on their rifles. They start shooting at the ladies on the horses. And it turns out that they were decoys on the horses. And then the girls appear behind the men and kill them all. So I have a lot of questions about this scene, Devin. Number one, how the hell did they know the guys were there? Number two, how did they sneak up on these guys? Number three, how the fuck did they create these decoys and do it so fast? And number four, how did they did they know that their, their fucking horses aren't gonna get shot while these guys shoot at their decoys? The girls leave one of the guys alive because they wanna send him back to town to send Carver a message that they're coming for him. The three ladies and Marvin sneak into town while all the Carver's men are all over the place. They're outnumbered, they're outgunned, but they proceed to go around town slowly killing well, all the Carver's Well, that's just classic men. Western stuff. That's no different from any good Western either. Yeah, that's true. That's not like any yeah, different. That's yeah. true. Uh, Bartell's like, screw this, I'm out of here. Uh, Carver decides to go out, and as Bartell's running away, Donnie shoots Bartell, not quite killing him. He, he takes off, and you find out that Donnie's now out of bullets, and here comes Carver, and he's like, I always want to make it a fair fight. So he takes a bullet out of his gun, throws it on the ground in front of Donnie, and he's insinuating if she can grab the bullet, load it into her gun, and shoot him quicker than he can draw on her, that's going to be a fair fight. So then Martin shows up, he shoots the gun out of Carver's hand, and he's like, now it's a fair fight. So now Carver has to get to his gun before Donnie can get to the bullet, load it in her gun, and shoot him. And guess what happens, Devin? Donnie gets the bullet, loads it into her gun, and shoots Carver before he can shoot her. And then Bartell pops up out of nowhere, and Marvin shoots Bartell, and that's the end of this shit show of a movie. Tell me how bad it, how, tell me just how bad. Tell the audience just how bad this movie is. I mean, is. it's really bad. Like, it's not even, it's, it's nowhere near good bad. I mean, it's bad. Like, it's just, it's, I'll probably never think of this movie again, honestly. Okay, here's the thing. It's got the dumb trope where they write women to be stupid and sexual objects, yeah. I, which I think is so dumb and I hate yeah. that. But it's written by a woman. Yeah. Yeah, it is odd. So, yeah, this movie is like f***ing 
misogynistic and stupid and uncomfortable at times. And, yep. uh, yeah, it's basically, it's honestly just a porno. It really yep. is. Guess what? It's not a keeper. So that means it's going to be a give it away. So if any of you guys want to put yourself through the pain and torture of watching this movie or owning it in your collection, you can enter the giveaway by going to vhs.voyage on Instagram and looking for the giveaway post, which will go live the day this video goes live. You'll have one week from the day this video goes live to enter that giveaway vhs.voyage link in the description down below i'll be really curious to see how many people entered the giveaway for this one uh well here's the thing this guy's directed 107 movies so he has some sort of audience of people that like these kind of movies that's a good point yeah that is a and good point and there's some creeps on instagram that's a good and point. i know they follow this page yes i'm calling some of our <laughs> subscribers creeps i don't give a shit so many people want to be fake as fuck and yeah. like be like oh i love all my audience i don't <laughs> i think some of you are creeps so that's it for today's episode of VHS Voyage on Hard Bounty. I'm Matt. I'm Devin. And we'll catch you guys next week.